Some might say Steve Barkowski had his heyday in the late 1970s, early 1980s, when he served as Atlanta's first glamour quarterback. He came to the still young franchise as the NFL's first overall draft pick in 1975. He was the consolation for another horrible season. This one, uh, 3-11, 1974. With Barkowski, the Falcons would sample the first sips of the postseason. He would go to a couple Pro Bowls, and in 1980, lead the NFL in passing touchdowns and a playoff loss to Dallas that stood as the most excruciating moment in franchise history for 37 years until a certain blown 28-3 Super Bowl lead. His importance to the Falcons is preserved in the team's ring of honor, where has kept the few memorable players of a team without a title. Others, those of a gentler mind, might argue that Barkowski is having the time of his life right now. He has traded the long ago violence and tumult of the NFL, 11 seasons overall with the Falcons, for peaceful late life reverie amid the rivers and wildlife of Montana. catch up with the 66-year-old Barkowski now, you fly into Bozeman and drive for 90 minutes, passing miles and miles of Lewis and Clark historical markers, a mountain range or two, and lots of water on the move before dipping into the Ruby Valley. It used to be that fishing and hunting were Barkowski's guilty pleasures. As a younger man, he'd sneak away from the gravity of his responsibilities in Atlanta, escape to Montana, and lose himself in the pursuit of trout or some horned animal and then, on the flight home, beat himself up for not being able to stay longer. Four years ago, I think I made the comment to my wife. I said, you know, hey, look, if there's ever a chance of us having the opportunity to live in Montana, that's where I want to live. Now his work address is the Ruby Drake Lodge, just outside Twin Bridges, Montana, population 300 which happens now to be the same address of his passion for wild things. It has all come together for him. Yeah, baby. There's no such thing as a bad day fishing for me. I mean, there really isn't. I mean, there's great days uh, where you go and you might catch 15 or 20, you know. Uh, uh, I just, you know, the scenery, I have to remind myself to, to take my head out of the river and, and you know, look up and, and just, you know, be captured by the, the scenic, uh, you know, river after river that you can fish out here. You know, the scenery is just awesome. While he still gets back to Atlanta on occasion, and while he'll flee the Montana winters for a Hawaiian condo, Markowski now is in his third summer of running the lodge with the great help of family. Son Pete is the guide, the one responsible for navigating the five trout rivers within range of the lodge and the wide valleys when it turns hunting season. You know, Pete was, uh, you know, he, he's an incredible kid, he, uh, and he's always been good at whatever he's kind of put his hand to, uh, and he's, he, he was working construction with us, uh, and his brother and I, we all work for the same construction firm, DPR Construction, and he came home one day uh, working on a big job, and, and he said to me, he said, Dad, you know, I'm not sure I want to do this the rest of my life, and I said, well, you're a young man, you're 31 years old. You know, you got to go find something that floats your boat. Now, I didn't know he was going to do that. <laughs> you know, now Pete has taught me so much about fly fishing that I could have never learned on my own. You know, I mean, it's been a, it's been a deep download. He's the teacher and I'm the student now, so. Steve is the CEO in charge of public relations, a good name and a big personality that comes in handy when fishing for customers. Need someone to maybe scramble an egg in the morning, drag a dead decomposing skunk out from beneath one of the cabins? That really happened. The quarterback is now a host, a position that helps support his fishing habit. You know, I think that we put together a pretty good team. You know, I mean, we're painting by the numbers. I tell people we don't really know what we're doing. You know, we're, we're trying some stuff and, and it's, you know, some of it works and some of it doesn't. Um, yeah, my mantra has always been control the things you can control. And, you know, if you can do that, 
you know, give people a, a, a nice destination where they feel comfortable. Um, the rooms are well appointed. Um, give them a great meal. Uh, give them a hot shower. You know that 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 you know, will knock them down. You know. Um, at the end of the day, those are the things you can control. Now, whether or not the fish bite, you know, on that given day, you know, you're sort of at, uh, at the mercy of, uh, of, of the fish. It is hardly difficult to pull him away from the lodge and get him out to fish for a day on the Big Hole River. The Big Hole winds 150 miles through southwest Montana without a single dam to stop it. Left purely to its own imagination, it cleaves the land whimsically in random twists and bends as if its course were drawn in finger paint at the pre-K stage of creation. It's one of the world's great water features, the stony bank rising to meet copses of willow and cottonwood, wispy fields of grass, rocky outcrops. Around the most memorable bends, the scenery comes with a distant backdrop of mountain peaks, here in July still wearing traces of the snow that feeds the river's flow. Good one, man. I think he's hammered that stone fly. I hate to say it, but I think we're taking the mop off and putting another stone on. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm sort of on, on, on borrowed time. You know, I mean, I, it's you know, it's it, it's it's like uh, I'm playing with house money, <laughs> as, as you would say in Vegas. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, 52 at age 52, I was diagnosed with cancer and got through that. Um, um, you know, it, it, it had the, the knees replaced. I was feeling so good. I had the knees replaced and I had the pulmonary embolism and, and uh, you know, died, actually literally died in the hospital. They resuscitated me. And so I'm, on, I'm you know, I'm, there's a reason I'm still here, you know, and I, if it's to help Pete get this thing established or it's going to be a lifelong thing for him, I'd be more than happy to throw it in help. And now you understand a little better why the first Atlanta quarterback to matter has left the city for a far more placid life. Here he can sit out behind the lodge when the mosquitoes are not out in fearsome force and solve the world's problems on the bank of the Ruby River. The only traffic jam he'll ever encounter consists of waiting for some local rancher to move his cattle from one side of the road to the other. There's football to watch here too in the fall. Because of a lack of bodies, the local high school plays the eight-man variety and Barkowski has a state championship ball signed by every member of that team. Barkowski has returned to the plainer kind of life as when he was a kid in Iowa, spending his days pulling carp from the Des Moines River. And he says he is blessed because of it. He'll say when you leave the NFL, you become an instant relic. And that's okay. If you play it right and you catch a few breaks, this being a relic isn't so bad. And you have one of the best seats on earth to watch the river flow on by. <laughs>